Hello everybody, I'm Reinhold von Gleer, and we're in the shop tonight to turn iron into steel. This is the process of cementation, which is uh, really a process of carburization, but cementation is the name of the process as it was developed in the late 16th century. Now, we say developed in the late 16th century because that's when we ha first have evidence. Uh, there was a treatise published in Prague, and uh, at the end of the 16th century, uh, it was commercialized in, with an operation in Nuremberg. And uh, this quickly eclipses the period of focus of the SCA. Um, but uh, the process must have been known earlier on. I, the, the treatise was published in 1574, but it's really no different than what blacksmiths have been doing by the side of the forge um, since time immemorial, since, since the Roman age. But the explosion of learning in the Renaissance formalized the process of turning iron into steel and was what allowed the industrialization of steel production. So cementation is very simply placing iron in a carbon-rich environment. Carbon in iron seeks a kind of homeostasis and ordinarily we experience that as decarburization. Um, young smiths will often experience decarburization of their work because they keep placing the work back in the forge to get it right to because they're not efficient with their metal shaping yet and that's okay um, it can be easily fixed by grinding so we say forge thick grind thin um, that'll always remove your decarburization because uh, carbon migrates in or out of steel at a rate of about five one thousandths of an inch per hour so not very fast but very easy to uh, to ruin your surface um, if you aren't doing much stock removal. Now you can see here I'm just grinding and sifting the, um, the charcoal. Um, cement Cementation was done with what they called cement powder or cementation powder. Um, and that was more than just charcoal, but I wanted to demonstrate that we could do this with plain ordinary charcoal and I'm also using plain ordinary steel from the hardware store this is something that anybody can get um, as is this piece of steel tubing the the process of cementation when it was industrialized was done inside stone coffins uh, stone vessels that they looked like coffins looked like giant coffins that's where they got their name but uh, it doesn't have to be stone. It doesn't have to be large. It can be done on small scale. However, it does take time. Um, so at a rate of five one-thousandths of an inch per hour um, on two-inch thick bars that were used in Sheffield, for instance, um, those, those furnaces had to run for a week. But here, with one eighth inch parrot stock, um, you can, because you're going to have the carbon moving through the steel at um, on, from both sides. So uh, one eighth of an inch is 0.125. Uh, it's moving at a rate of 0 0.005 per hour. Uh, you, you can get halfway through um, in 12 hours. So that's what we're going to do. Also, the temperature at which the, the, the iron is cooking really makes a big difference. Um, the rate of carbon migration at, say, 1400 to 1450 is about half of what it'll be at 1600 to 1625. So here we have my stack of parent stock, and I'm about to part off the the coffin. 
And I've really been overly ambitious about how much material I would be able to fit in uh, this coffin at any one time. Of course, I can fill it with that stack of steel, but I also need to fill it with a bunch of carbon powder, charcoal powder. And I didn't think about that when I cut up all of that steel. That's okay. I'm going to have a second baking later on. Now, since carbon migrates out of steel when it is in a low carbon environment, for instance, when it's just in a fire, and carbon migrates into steel when it's in a high carbon environment, for instance, when it's packed in charcoal or graphite. Graphite would be much easier to use, by the way. Um, then this coffin, since it is also steel, will also become a piece of high carbon steel. It'll be improved from the inside out. Now this is the same kind of vessel that you would make if you were making canister Damascus and a lot of makers will cut a plug instead of folding the edge over. It doesn't really make a difference. I always thought that the process of cutting a plug was a lot more cutting and fitting. But uh, it welded up really nice. Ordinarily I would use a MIG for this, but uh, the MIG machine was in a different area of the shop. So I was stuck with the TIG. And here, when the metal is all clean, it welded up beautifully. Uh, even though I was just using a piece of baling wire as my filler material. However, when the uh, when the coffin is full of charcoal, um, it got significantly more difficult to weld, and that MIG would have been really nice. Now, we're filling the canister with steel and charcoal. Um, and the charcoal is, of course, a flammable material. Uh, if you've watched any YouTube blacksmiths making canister Damascus, you'll often see them drill a tiny little hole uh, in one of the ends of the canister. And, well, when you have a flammable material, or just any gas that will expand when it's heated inside a... Uh, a completely sealed container? Well, you've just made a bomb. So we need to leave ourselves some space for those gases to release. And later on, you'll see um, when my canister really heats up, uh, there's a tiny little torch that uh, acts like a candle out of one end. Now, I was just using the, uh, the gaps in the weld purposely left a few pieces uh, unwelded that do just as well as drilling a hole. I didn't want to bother with drilling a hole with all of that carbon dust inside. But you can see it here where it spits and sparks and uh, you can even see a little flame erupt and then you'll see that later when the, uh, when the canister heats up. Now I mentioned at 1600 degrees, this process is going to take about 12 hours. So you need something that you can keep hot for about 12 hours. This is my heat treating oven and it'll do the job just fine. But a pottery kiln will work equally fine. If you're working with fire, it's going to be a very difficult day long process to keep your, keep your fire hot and your steel hot so that your process of uh, carbon migration doesn't stop on you. And here we get to see the big reveal.
Lighting's not good. Here it is. Just the color difference alone, you can see there's been a significant change in the steel. And look how hard I'm pushing. I really cranked on that. As I pull these out, if you look at the bottom corner, you'll see a little shadow of blue. And that is where the, uh, the charcoal fell away from the upper corners of the piece. Okay, that was the mild steel, and here, look at that. Look at that sparking difference. We've made steel. Thank you so much. Thank you for checking out my YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this video and would like to watch more of my videos, please follow the links on the left-hand side. Remember to select thumbs up that you like the video. It helps with the algorithm. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below, and please click subscribe and ring that bell to be updated when new videos come out.